Welcome back to another hot takes video and the first hot take is all about Roman Reigns and how his return was not so great. The first one comes from Rebound2 who says that Roman Reigns' return was ass, there was bad music, and there was no pop shaking my head. And then a similar hot take says that Roman's return was not quite as momentous as they would think. They thought the spot for his return was weak. And the last one comes from Twitter which says that Roman's return pop just failed to crack the best pop of all time. Carlito's return at Backlash was way louder than this, but they do admit that the ua was ear shattering let's compare the return this was roman's return oh wait <laughs> and this was carlito I can't lie to you, I do think that Carlito had a louder pop, but we gotta remember the fact that that took place all the way in Puerto Rico and they don't get too many shows. You know what I mean? Also, that was Carlito's return after years and years in his hometown. When it comes to Roman, it was Cleveland, and on top of that too, it was at the end of the night when all the people were tired because it was an eventful SummerSlam. The UA was awesome, but the pop was not as loud as I thought it would be. And as for round two, I don't think it was ass. I think it was great. I don't think it's the best return of all time. I think we've seen better. Like CM Punk's return, that in my opinion was better, but this was still a great return for Roman Reigns. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I can't complain. The next hot take comes from Sean Harris, and they say that Finn was a rightful choice for dethroning Damian Priest. And when you really look at the storyline right now and how hot it is, I don't think this is a bad hot take at all. I love Gunther. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a great World Heavyweight Champion. I think he's going to do a lot of justice for that belt and bring a lot of prestige to it. But I do want to say Finn dethroning Damian Priest would have been a nice storyline like i said the judgment day story is so hot so i honestly wish that that would have happened and then gunther could have defeated finn balor but it is what it is we can't go back into the past we are kid vibe says that almost nobody can defeat gunther for the world heavyweight championship i disagree actually i think that cm punk drew mcintyre or Seth Rollins. i really don't care i want one of those guys winning if we can get a triple threat match for the world heavyweight championship i feel like that is the right move it's not gonna happen but i'm just saying i would not mind i would be totally fine with WWE pulling the trigger with this one. Khalid says that Ilya Dragunov should be facing Gunther at Bash in Berlin instead. It just makes perfect sense instead of Randy Orton. They had a five-star match after a five-star match. It could have been the same in Berlin. A red-hot crowd rooting for Gunther and going crazy for the match with Gunther retaining. Would have been the perfect main event for the show. And as much as I think that would have been awesome, I don't think Ilya Dragunov is in a position to be in a big world title match. I think Randy was the right move. I think it was a great shocker on Raw and I think those are going to kill it in the ring like they did at King of the Ring. And it makes sense because, as we know, Randy's shoulder was never down. Grayson Waller thinks that Ilya Dragunov should dethrone Gunther at WrestleMania 41. And I still don't know how I feel about that one. I think Ilya Dragunov should not be the World Heavyweight Champion for at least one or two years. He's still so young. He's still so new to the main roster. And there's so many people ahead of him on that line to become the World Champion. So I'm sorry I don't agree. But what I do agree with is the next hot take, which has a John Cena should be the one dethrone Gunther and I want to see one more world championship run by Johnson he's got to break the record and beating Gunther at Wrestlemania 41 would be so fire and then we could get a short run from John Cena from April all the way to December I think that's a great idea and you know what maybe Randy should be the one who beats John Cena that's a perfect way to end the career and the perfect way to book the world's heavyweight championship in the next year Karan says that SummerSlam 2024 proves that we don't need a two-night PLE just put all the important matches in the card I will say I liked having seven matches on the card. I think five is way too short, so I hope that Triple H does move into the seven into seven matches. But with that said, I still like WrestleMania being two nights, and I still do want to see SummerSlam in the future go to two nights as well. I think having SummerSlam and WrestleMania as two night events just makes it feel so much more special. So many more matches can get booked, and also it just feels like a great time to, to watch wrestling with your friends for a couple days. Maya Show says that SummerSlam 2024 was the greatest pay-per-view of the Renaissance era. I gotta disagree. I do think that that WrestleMania 40 was better just because that last match, the one with Roman Reigns, where The Undertaker showed up with The Rock, which would shield Seth Rollins. I think that was so perfect. And even John Cena. I'm sorry, but that's number one. Number two is indeed SummerSlam 2024. That's my opinion.
Christian says that Raw after SummerSlam was the best Raw in the last five years, and I saw a lot of people saying this, but I gotta disagree. Look, I love that Raw. I think it's one of the best Raws of all time, actually, but I don't think it's the best Raw in the last five years. We've gotten some great Raws. Even earlier this year, the Raw where, uh, where Cody got completely destroyed, and we had the CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and, and Seth Rollins promo where they were completely unhinged. I thought that was a great Raw. AMJ says that Punk turning heel will be a golden moment, and I cannot wait. I think Punk's heel turn is going to go so crazy. Drew McIntyre is going to keep saying that how he was right this entire time. The same with Seth Rollins. It is a moment that will break the internet and we got to get CM Punk versus Roman when that does happen. Glassman says that The Rock inserts himself into the 2025 Royal Rumble with this CKO power and then he wins at the 31st entrant. And I'm not mad at that idea at all. I kind of like that hot take. I would love to see it because then we get The Rock versus Cody and the people will absolutely hate The Rock and root for Cody. So it's a great story. I want to see it happen. Psych Dank says that not every champion has to be a long-term holder. I completely agree. I don't think that every champion should have the title for at least 300 days. I want to see people have the title for 50 days, 90 days, 100 days, 200 days, maybe 900. I don't care. I think it depends on the storyline. And so because of that, I agree with this hot take. The next hot take says that out of all the four major world champions at WrestleMania 40, Damian Priest has been the best champion. And at first, I was unsure about this hot take. But the more I think about it, I do think that Damian Priest might have been the best world champion because... Because, uh, because Rhea Ripley got injured, so she wasn't the champion. And then you had Bayley, who had a very lackluster run. Cody's run was pretty good, but it was not better than Damian Priest. So this, I gotta agree with this hot take. The next hot take says that Trick Williams has the potential to be the next face of the company. People don't give him enough credit. I do think he is the face of the WWE, or at least one of the biggest faces in the WWE for the next decade. But I think a lot of people do give him credit. If they don't, I think they're totally wrong. Because Trick has all the tools to become very successful, and the people absolutely adore this guy so i think he's gonna be great he just needs some more time in nxc to get better in that ring figures reviewer says that ed should have retired after his last wwe match I don't know. I, I don't agree with this at all. I, I think Edge had a blast in AEW before he got injured, so I don't see why there's a point for him retiring. Like, yes, his WWE run was fun. His match with Sheamus was awesome, but what he was doing in AEW was also great, so I don't think he should retire, and he does want to come back, so he should come back and have another year or two. Whatever he's got left in the tank, he should wrestle. Phoenix Firebird says that Odyssey Jones feels like a young Mark Henry all over again. Man's had the strength to keep up both authors of pain up, even for a split two seconds. Yeah, I agree. That, that man was a beast. I think that was a great way to make him debut on Raw. I don't know why they waited 400 days for this guy to show up on Monday Night Raw. If he's got talent like that, he will add a new element to the New Day. Speaking of the New Day, Ryan says that the New Day should just break up at this point. There's literally nothing left for them to do. Kofi and Xavier have more potential as single stars right now. I think that we are going to get an Xavier heel turn very soon. And then Kofi might just become a tag team with Jones. That's what I see happening at least. The Reaper play says that people make Solo Sokoa out to be so much worse than he actually is. I still see a bright future for him. I'm aware that this gave him relevancy on the main roster in the first place, but I also feel like the Bloodline story is what's holding him back from realizing his true potential. When he's finally able to stay on his own two feet and continue his career on his own, he's going to be really, really successful. I think he finally has reached success. I think this new group, it took some time to kick in, but now that the, the new Bloodline has kicked in, they're doing great. Solo is absolutely booed every single week. He's got a lot of heel heat, and he's going to have a big program in I think Solo is a big star. Ready to Dive In says that the old Saudi events will hit like old manias in the future. They weren't good from a match or story standpoint, but the moments, seeing all the legends return, the moments is bigger than the match. I gotta somewhat agree and disagree. I do think that we're gonna look back and be like, that's crazy out how Undertaker faced Goldberg for no reason, but we're also gonna watch it and kind of just laugh and be like, wow, that match was ass. So you know what? For this hot take, I will somewhat agree and disagree. And the last hot take says that we need to get Larry versus Pharaoh at WrestleMania 41. That is a match that WWE needs to book who will win let me know in the comments below anyways that is it for the video guys thank you so much for watching i hope y'all enjoyed if you did please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and i'll see you all in the next video